Today I would like to do a sample install of Visual Studio Code. This is a totally uh, clean Windows machine. Um, all I've done is installed Chrome on it. Um, and I'm using the Windows Sandbox uh, to, do, to make that kind of clean machine. So uh, we're going to search for VS Code, which takes us to code.visualstudio.com. And there's a download button right here at the top. Oh, and I think I have to pick a 64-bit user installer. What were the other options? System installer. I don't understand what the system installer is versus a user installer. I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe if like I'm installing it system wide for every user of my machine. Is that right? I'm not sure. It's kind of weird. It says it's not meant to be run as administrator. Oh, if you'd like to install VS Code for all users in the system, you have to download the system installer. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't care. Uh, I'm just going to do it. Install it for me. Uh, accept the license terms. Let it go where it's going to go. Um, it's going to add it to the path. So I can type in a command line code, the word code, to launch this editor. And let's install it. And we'll just get to the point where we can type in a web page with a live server and, uh, and confirm that it works. OK, so here we go. We have Visual Studio Code. Let's bring up um, Git Bash. If you've already installed Git, I made a, another video about installing Git, which would give you this Git Bash command line. Um, let's see, can I dock this to the side? Well, let me do that here. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to make there a folder called projects. And we'll cd into that. And then I'm going to make there a um, test project. cd test dash project. And uh, let's close Visual Studio Code, and we'll just kind of test out the, and we don't need this anymore. I closed Chrome. I closed everything else. Um, if I type code space dot, that is going to run Visual Studio Code on the folder that I just created. So here on the left side, you see all the files in the current folder. On the right side, it gives me some help of what to do first. This little icon here says create an, uh, was let me create a new file. So I'm going to create an index.html. There we go. Um, and I'm going to type, I think, uh, hello worlds is what the, <laughs> that video said that uh, I think we had in our course set was talking about. Just to put uh, hello worlds in there. And here is the extension menu. And let's get. Live server up and running. There it is, live server by Ritwick Day. That is a great name. And thank you, Ritwick. I think everyone everyone loves this extension. It should probably just be included with, uh, with, with Visual Studio. Um, let's see, let's go back to this one. If I right click on this file and I can say open with live server, and then it says, oh, I'm going to have to allow access. Um, and there we go. So I got a, um, let's put this one on the left and that one on the right. And so notice the URL is 127.0.0.1, which is the same, also called localhost. Sometimes you'll see that. Uh, slash index.html, hello worlds. It has the text that we just type in there. Um, the, let's see. Library loads not okay. So it's talking about I've got problems with uh, the way the structure of this thing. Library load is not possible without a body or head tag. Oh, I hadn't seen that before. Um, I think uh, that was something that uh, that Fulcheesy had talked about. Um, so 
Okay, so don't I, I'm not gonna show that again. It said the server started at port 5500. So one thing that's going on behind the scenes here, just to explain this, is that Visual Studio is, has within it a web server that it's running in the background. And then when you launch Chrome, it connects to that web server uh, through, uh, through this extension. And, or it connects to the local uh, web server, which is hosted on a port. So web servers, most of the time we don't see ports when we navigate to web uh, web pages on the internet, they're usually port 80, which is the standard one for HTML pages, or H, I'm sorry, web servers. But you can actually serve them on different ports, and this, if the server is listening on that port, it can actually serve web pages on other ports. So when you have a debugging, or a de a, like a development web server on your local machine, Usually it serves things on different ports. So 5500 is a local port like that. Um, and that's where it's working. So if I typed something here and just hit save, well, what do you know? It's not showing up in live server because of that warning it told us about. So let's go ahead and put in a valid HTML file. Uh, HTML. Uh, you don't need a head tag. Uh, hello world and I hit save and it still didn't update it and so I wonder if like a live server got disconnected somehow so I'm gonna close that web page and we'll do that again we'll open with live server okay there it opened it opened up that thing and I'm gonna change you change something here and control S to save and there it updates so I think maybe the issue was that once it got disconnected from um, once that page got kind of disconnected from the the web server underneath it it was no longer able to do the live update so you have to have a valid HTML and body tag in your document that you are serving and then once it is connected it will update every time you every time you save. So there we go. Um, and just for a little bit of behind the scenes magic, I can open up, I hit Control Shift J to open up developer tools. And uh, let's maximize this guy so we can see what's going on here. This is the Chrome debugger and it's all it's in every every debugger so it's it's great. Um, but if you see what they're doing here, if I look at index.html, look at all this code injected by live server. So here's the reason it wasn't working if you don't have a body tag. Um, and see all this code has to be put into the body of your web page. And that is, this is the thing that is kind of communicating with the, um, with the server behind Visual Studio Code and it's getting messages about when the page has been updated so it knows when to refresh the current page. And you can see there's some stuff in here. There's some event handlers that actually reload, reload this page uh, when, when an event occurs. So that is why it was not showing up for you. So sorry about that, and I'm sorry it, it uh, kind of was very frustrating, and it looks like it kind of took up a bunch of your time. But if you just restart it again, it should work. So anyway, that's how to install Visual Studio Code and get live server working. The, the, the key learning is make sure you have a well-formed HTML page when you first open the connection, and then it should work from then on. Okay, thanks a lot, and I, I hope that gets you unstuck.